Ah uh, yes, the three greatest Nintendo franchises. Complex JRPG, Complex JRPG, and Funny Racing Game for Kids. that I played when I was young, Mario Kart is the one that has stuck with me most. Of course the Mario platformers, or Pokemon, or Smash Bros, I still enjoy them and will get excited with new releases, but Mario Kart is something I'll still regularly play. The reason it hooked me in so well, it was simple to understand and there are lots of cool characters in cool places. I remember the moment when I unlocked the Leaf Cup and Wii very well, I had no idea how to do it but finally seeing that there were actually some more tracks was mind blowing at the time. And as I grew older, my interest never really died out. New entries released, I got better at pulling off shortcuts, and still, there's a bunch of cool characters and cool places. Today, I'm going to talk about those cool places, the racetracks. In fact, the 10 best racetracks in the whole franchise. Anything from the original all the way through tour. The arcade games, well, I really play them, so don't expect anything there. And finally, my criteria, just whatever I like. Generally fun shortcuts, aesthetic, and nostalgia is what gives something a high ranking. Before we begin, here's a word from our sponsor. Yeah. Can you tell everyone to sub to Klaus, please? Sub to Klaus, please. Thanks. You're welcome. <laughs> to say I have a bias for 8, and especially Wii? Yeah, it's true. Those two are the ones I play the most, so most of the tracks I like are often one of those two games, sometimes both. In fact, every track on this list is playable in either of those two games. Except for this one. Airship Fortress from Mario Kart DS is a pretty cool track, all things considered. I never actually owned this game. My experience is purely boring it from friends. At first I didn't consider putting this here, but the more I thought about it, I remembered that I loved this one back in the day. The stormy landscape with the dark, oppressive music is kind of intense, but in a good way. There's also funny features that play as well. From the rocky wrenches to the fire obstacles, I even like these random boxes. You also get shot out of a cannon, which, as you'll see later, is always a positive. I like how it gives you a bit of a pause before you get back into the action. But the star feature here is this giant spiral turn down a big tower. It's still simple, but like, I love it. I had many fun memories with the short time I got to play Mario Kart DS, and a lot of it was just having fun on Airship Fortress. It is also in Mario Kart 7, and honestly, it's pretty fun there too. So you can even drive on the walls here. The overall Mario Kart fandom seems to be pretty split on the city tracks. I've seen lots of people say that they don't belong in the game, they are taking away spots in the booster course pass, blah blah blah, typical Nintendo dribble drabble. Personally I enjoy them, the different routes for each lap makes it more dynamic, but honestly, I'm just a geography enthusiast. I will admit, some are better than others though, but the good ones are some of the most fun to zip through. You got Singapore, with its unique architecture and electric feel to it. Berlin has this beautiful water, wamps falling from their wall, and a great backing track. Vancouver, well, I mainly just like it because I'm Canadian, but still, it's really good. However, the best of all of them is Sydney Sprint. For starters, in real life, it's a great city. They got all the big landmarks here like Bondi Beach, or the Harbour Bridge, and of course one of the best architectural feats, the Sydney Opera House. Plus the music is so good, jazzy and smooth with an addicting overall melody. What makes the city track the best city track though is it's so much fun to drive through. Crank is up to 200cc and once you've been the roots and all the shortcuts, shroom or no shroom, you're just flying through it. The only thing it is missing, a giant spider trying to kill you. Just not Australia without it, you know? <coughs> Super Mario Sunshine kind of sucks. I haven't actually played it, but whatever, okay. I don't want these slip inside controls, do not want to deal with that. But it definitely got some stuff right. Atmosphere, world design. Piantas, other funny dances, funny colors, the Chuckster. A course dedicated to these guys can only be good, right? Oh yeah. I didn't realize how good and how much I enjoyed Delfino Square, but the fact is, this track is extremely well made. At the start, you'll drive forward and find a big statue of the stars of the show, then some corridors with a split path, which was very fascinating to see when I was younger. 
Then finally, you go over a bridge, drive past the ocean, over another bridge, which you might actually be able to literally go over, and back in through town for the next lap. The vibe is kind of like Boston, but more tropical. It's got like a lot of cobblestone aesthetic, along with some seagulls and ports, markets, cool things like that. As for driving it, well, we covered all the different features in the app, just a lot going on. And I also like the change in elevations plus as well. But finally, just this one giant double shortcut here. It's incredible. 200cc is objectively the best way to play. 150 is fine and all, but when you get going faster and start applying off these wild shortcuts, you can't just go back. They definitely designed some tracks for the faster playstyle, such as Mute City. It's crossover track with F0, which is the game all about going fast, so of course it should end up pretty well. The whole thing is anti-gravity, and it's one of the few times you can really tell, hey, I'm upside down, since you can see the other racers zooming around above you. I like the whole futuristic style going on here as well. But of course, it's mainly the speed. You just go so fast, you can charge up your coins in an instant, boost panels everywhere, spin off everyone else because of the anti-gravity. I even outran a blue shell here once without even needing a mushroom. The shortcut here is super easy to nail, but it's also so satisfying to clear this whole gap like it's nothing. If this is how it feels to play F-Zero, then I should probably try it out sometime. Yeah, yeah, dead franchise, they should make a new one, haha, <laughs> so funny. I like animals. Flamingos? Awesome! But no Mario Kart tracks for them. Alligators? Super cool. Again, no Mario Kart tracks, though. Dolphins? Amazing. And luckily for us, Dolphin Shoals is an incredible track. There's places in the world where you can swim with dolphins, which I've never done, but I imagine it's similar to this. They say dogs are man's best friends, but I disagree. It's dolphins. The ones we got in the Mario universe are pretty good, too. They got a rich blue color and funny little goggles. I love them. As for the track itself, you'll start out with a sunny atmosphere, jump through some rings, nice uplifting scenery. Then you get to go in the cool underwater cave, the pipes will blow you through the diverging paths, and if you're good, you can do some nice skips. There's this giant eel just hanging out as well. Then it's back in the sun, and when you pop out of the water, the music... From here, it's one giant turn, and then a nice little glider section with a 200cc shortcut that I discovered myself. It's not amazing, but I found it on my own, and I'm proud of myself for it. So you'll get this incredible atmosphere and theming with a great backing track, and it's fun to drive. It's pretty close to perfection. I do kind of wish you could spend a bit more time above water, but then you might not get to swim with dolphins as much, so it's actually fine as it is. Maybe more dolphins will be better. I hear one of them is a doctor. <laughs> Some people seem to think that games that are targeted more towards kids need to be easy. You see it a lot with Pokemon or Kirby. Developers or even the fans have this mindset that kids might not be able to handle it. I think no. If I could learn to drive Mario Kart Weezer in the road, Little Jimmy can handle a hard Pokemon battle. In all seriousness though, this track's difficulties will make it special. Here are the obstacles you'll face on Rainbow Road. Getting knocked off the big hill, falling through these holes in the road, messing up this turn, messing up this turn, losing control in this tunnel, getting target shocked over all the gaps, and of course, since it's Mario Kart Wii, you'll get Mario Karted. And then when you do fail, you'll get the Comet Trails, which is a pretty nice touch. I don't think it's a stretch to say it's the hardest track in the franchise. Since it's the last track of the Nitro Cups, I'm super glad they end on a conclusive note like this, as it truly feels like the final test when you're in Grand Prix mode. Of course, I should talk about the visuals as well. It's gorgeous! The giant slope at the start, which yes, you can shortcut off of. The half pipes, the wobbly section, these giant holes, the slick shortcut, the cannon, which is a star, shooting star, the split path, and this final section with the speed ramps. And of course, the colors are nice, and the music is really good too. I have a really fond memory too of just having friends over one day and watching them play it, and they were just awful and fell off like 20 times each. The games are almost more fun if you're bad at them. I said it in the last entry, and I'll say it here. Difficult tracks are awesome, especially at the end. 7 and 8 were a bit lacking in their Special Cups difficulty, which is slightly disappointing, but hey, leave it to we. Movie Highway is no joke. I always enjoyed driving through cities at night, with many vague memories of going up for dinners or driving to and from airports from when I was really young, and I think that helped me resonate with this one. It gives off that aesthetic, but with a much more chaotic energy. You're dealing with cars zooming both ways, including bomb cars, which I'm sure that's not unique this track, but 
feels as if they're going faster and that there's a lot of blank corners, which from other things ever so more precarious. There's lots of decor around here too. Some cliffs in the more outskirts part, a fancy bridge, some toll takers, which are of course your knees, plus this nifty movie poster. Plus the music, oh man, the fluttering theme really helps keep pace with the energy of the track. Finally, I just want to mention the shortcut where you take a huge jump and just get a look at the night sky. It's beautiful. The fun and danger this track presents, along with some real world connections, is what makes me love this one. I'd like to see these puppies RL. I wonder how much these insurance would cost. <coughs> the Marioverse has a lot of good enemies. From Wigglers to Boos, even just a simple Koopa Troopa. Lots of these guys have tracks dedicated to them as well. In the case of Piranha Plants, how about a cool water slide sewer system type thing? That sounds fun, right? Piranha Plant Slide, or as some call it, Piranha Plant Pipeway, was one of the best things to come out of Mario Kart 7. To start with, as silly as it sounds, I like these bright colors at the start. They're pleasing to look at and help to make an exciting entrance into the real meat here, the slide. You're going to be racing with a stream of water helping to push you forward for a bit, and I like going fast, so awesome! As you keep going, you'll encounter the first of the track's namesakes, who is actually a threat you ought to dodge. You'll find some Goombas, some classic Mario blocks to ride on, and some pipes to jump off of. Next up is another entry zone with the bright colors, this time taking you in a big underwater area. If you're playing an 8 and you have a mushroom, well, you can also do this cool trick. Not super useful, but it's cool. Uh, we encounter one more of the track's namesakes, who is again a threat, but this time you can jump over him. Then the glider section with the classic Mario castle over a giant bottomless pit. Yeah, that's pretty exciting. Are they trying to say this is where Mario went after every level? Then there's more Goombas, but with imposters among them, and a neat little grass shortcut to top things off. I just think this track is supposed to be fun. It feels like a water slide. I don't like water slides because they're scary, but this ain't one of those free falls. Just a nice, smooth journey to the bottom, and it's a great time. Now if we could just get the Sledge Bros their own track, I'm sure that'd be something special. <coughs> Donkey Kong has some really great tracks. It's basically either a jungle, or extreme sports. It could also be both, like DK Mountain. I don't really know how to describe why this is so good, it's just, it's it's a mountain. How does this track play out? Well, you get shot out of the cannon to the top of the mountain, then you ride down to the bottom. Why do you do this? It's a mountain. But it's great at giving it a true racing feel, like if you actually were out mountain biking in real life. You get to see a lot of cool things here too. I don't know why this volcano is grumpy, but I like that he is. Kind of rude to say that now that I think about it. These boulders will be falling, there's half pipes in the Wii version, and the bridge. Oh, the bridge. Everyone has seen this clip by now, but my experience has always just been loading as many bananas on as possible. You get a big group of friends, you can put like 20 of those guys up in here. You even got the nickname as the Banana Bridge. I also appreciate the fact that the can is an actual DK barrel crane, it's a great touch. Going with the extreme sports feel again. There's a lot of funky tricks you can do, and especially love the shortcut where you have to actually slow down and then you can just dab every single item. I don't have much else to say, this track is just really fun. It's just a mountain. Something that's meant to be climbed and descended. Please bring it into 8 Deluxe. <coughs> it's Maple Tree Way. It's always going to be Maple Tree Way. I will admit that there's not too much to do here in terms of shortcuts or crazy tricks, and it's mainly just carried by visuals. But those visuals are so strong and have so many fun memories that it has to be number one here. To start, let's just talk about the design here. It has a fall-like vibe which I've hardly ever seen in games, much less so as a young kid, so that already helps it to stand out. You get shot out of a cannon, which is still a treat. You got leaf piles to go through. And let me tell you, when a star pops out and you're in first place, the power rush is so strong. Then you got the Wigglers. I love Wigglers more than my family, and they're so big and happy, like, just, just look at them. You got the light version of DK Mountain's Banana Bridge, and then followed up by the snap that you can trick off of. They did get rid of it in later appearances, but a glider is still decent at least. And then at the end, there's just these random trees that you can drive up, and I think it's just a nice little touch that really helps you bring it to the next level. Then there's this shortcut, which I discovered probably after a year of playing the game, and I remember thinking that there may be more stickers hiding in the game, and inspired me, gave me more to look forward to. What really reinforced the idea that it's my favorite track though, is just when it got added in the booster course past the last December. I was driving up through the log here, and could see up ahead they brought the half pipes back when I thought they'd be gone for good, then the music started to pick up, and it was incredible. I was hit with nostalgia, excitement, chills. There isn't much else in Mario Kart that has ever given me that feeling, and so for me, the best choice for this spot is absolutely Maple Treeway. 
And so that's going to be it for the best Mario Kart tracks throughout the series. You'd think with literally hundreds to choose from, it'd be hard to narrow it down, but it really wasn't that bad. I instantly knew most of the tracks on this list just from playing the game so much, I know what each of them mean to me. And if there's other tracks that mean something to you, let me know. Mario Kart has so much to it that I feel lots of people will resonate with lots of different things. So maybe Cheap Cheap Lagoon, that's a pretty lame track. Anyways, that is going to be all for today. I hope you enjoyed, and look forward to more Mario Kart videos in the future. But for now, see you later.